Hello and welcome by EA's art channel. My name is Ilkian Wiesma and today we're gonna talk about uh, this uh, little girl with her uh, little friend, the butterfly. And um, I'm, there's so much to talk about. This, this painting took a lot of time because there's a lot of hair and I would... Uh, uh, for this uh, painting I would like to um, uh, put more time in the details because of the hair I wanted to make it as realistic uh, as I, I could or as uh, photorealistic but we're going to talk about it more in, in this tutorial but um, yeah because of there are a lot of information I would like to share I think um, I am thinking of uh, making this tutorial um, in parts the, yeah that sounds a bit, a bit crazy because this one uh, this tutorial is the whole tutorial but I'm going to focus also with some tutorials on only the hairs and on the butterfly, maybe the skin tones, maybe uh, the skin and skin tones I uh, like to use. So I don't uh, gonna do all those um, after one another, but I'm gonna to share this uh, the, uh, in the couple of weeks, and I have to edit them all, and uh, so that will take some time, and I have to um, put my voice over into it and all that kind of fun stuff. But that will come uh, in, a, like I said, in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. So. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions about those tutorials, please leave them in the comment section below. And for now, um, here is the tutorial and I hope you like it. And first I start out with uh, laying in my uh, first layer with the acrylic paints. And I'm doing that because the um, Gamblin oil paints that I like to use are uh, a bit translucent and especially when I'm using the liquid from the Winsor Newton. And uh, therefore I'm saving a few steps by uh, laying in first a layer of the uh, almost black uh, acrylic paints. So I can work on a dark um, background and I don't have to use as much oil paint as uh, when I uh, would without the acrylic, uh, acrylic on the painting. And you saw me uh, starting on the, the face. I'm just laying in my first layers. And here you can see that it's uh, quite translucent, the paint that I'm using. And once again, it's also because I'm using the liquid. And I like to uh, use the thin layers and just build up from there. Because I found it a bit easier to lay in my details. And um, yeah, work from the first layers, the bigger details, till the last layers with the fine uh, details. That's just uh, how I like to work and uh, that's uh, what I'm doing here. I'm building up, laying in my first highlights or uh, at least where I think they should go. And I'm also adjusting um, a bit on the painting and on my drawing. Sometimes I'm a little bit off with uh, little stuff, but it's not that important uh, yet because I can uh, change that very easily. And um, also I like to mention that I don't change that much in the beginning even though I think I'm off because most of the times something uh, around the painting is um, needed to let uh, those details fall in their places. Uh, for example, uh, if you think you are a little bit off with details or some lights or some darks in the face, maybe you need to lay in first the hair and the uh, darks and lights of the hair and that will have a lot of influence at uh, how her face in this case uh, will uh, show up. So therefore, don't try to um, change too much in the beginning because it may seem uh, that you are a bit off but um, most of the times I, you may be not uh, that far off with your details but uh, like I said you need something uh, some around the, something around the subject to um, yeah complicate uh, not complicate <laughs> complement the uh, for example the lights just so you have to need a darker surrounding for that and uh, yeah, I'm just, like I said, slowly building up. I'm layering in some details here in the eyes. And even though it may seem to be uh, quite all the same color, that light of uh, under her iris, but I'm glazing over my uh, colors later on. So this is just a first setup. And here is um, was a touch of the shoulder. There will be a lot of hair uh, falling over that shoulder, but I'm just laying in that, uh, that yeah, little touch of the shoulder. I. Uh, I uh, say it like that, but a little hint of the show. That's uh, what I mean. And um, because now I can uh, paint over it uh, later on, and I have that feeling of a shoulder there. And also, I uh, maybe you noticed, but I changed the background quite a bit. I just started out with it uh, blue, a uh, darker blue, and lighter blue uh, in the background. But I uh, ended up not liking that so much. So therefore, I uh, took a little bit more of, uh, or uh, with the reference photo. This is. Uh, uh, obviously this background wasn't in a reference photo but I didn't like it so therefore I'm uh, changing it uh, later on 
And also, like I said in the intro, I'm going to focus more on the hairs, but the, the hairs is also a, a very, um, yeah, quite long layering process because it's uh, taking me a little bit longer because the oil paint uh, is drying up uh, very slowly in comparison, uh, in comparison with the uh, acrylic paints. But also I'm using, uh, of even though I uh, use a, a liquid that speed up the drying time, it still needs some drying time, uh, for example, uh, a night time. So overnight this will be dry and I can, I can paint on it uh, the next day. And also I'd like to mention that I'm really watching my uh, reference uh, very closely and I'm trying to block in uh, the different shapes that I'm seeing. Because for example on her face you see some highlights on her right hand uh, side of the face for our, uh, is it, uh, is it on the left, but you see there are some, uh, some highlights around the eye and those m do not make sense at the moment, but they will in the end of the painting. So therefore I just painted them in already because they need to be there because there is some light, I think it was some sunlight, uh, falling through her hair on her face. So therefore uh, to uh, let it uh, show up uh, as realistic as I want, I have to uh, paint in those highlights already. Even though, uh, like I said, they don't make any sense at, uh, at this uh, moment, but they will uh, in the end of the piece. And that was something I really had a hard time learning when I started painting. Because this is a really a ugly stage, it doesn't uh, look that nice yet. It is, uh, and of course it's uh, really logical at this moment because you have, uh, I have in this case uh, a few layers in so it can be uh, as good as the end painting. But yeah, you have to go through those layers to get it uh, as realistic as you can. So therefore just pay attention to your reference photo, it's your guiding line for this, these kind of pro, uh, pro, yeah, processes, these kind of layers. You need this, uh, that photo and, and just stick to the photo and you will get there. But you need to trust that and just building up and building up every teeny, teeny tiny little detail you see. You have to put it in your painting and it will come um, at least at the end of the painting and, and the end of the painting is just uh, the point that you're liking it. So therefore uh, it may not make any sense now but just lay in those details. And therefore I like to use different kind of brushes and uh, I don't need, uh, have any very expensive brushes, I just use the cheaper ones and yeah, I don't mind them, I, I think they work really, really well. I mean uh, by that that uh, I don't mind uh, using uh, cheap brushes because they uh, they do the job and uh, so therefore uh, I stick with the cheap brushes because uh, once in a while I just forget to clean up my brushes and I can basically throw them away throw them away but sometimes I uh, like to use old brushes because they can give a nice texture but yeah so therefore it's uh, for me uh, better to use cheap brushes <laughs> and um, yeah I just uh, keep on layering and I therefore I like to use Pixabay for um, no I'm sorry not Pixabay I got a reference order from Pixabay I like to use Pixlr and I have a tutorial on uh, on how I like to use Pixlr for uh, choosing my colors it makes it a lot easier and I have to really have to say that when I use that method I uh, will uh, have a link uh, pop up uh, by now if you uh, want to see it but it helped me really um, Adjusting my value, oh, no, not adjusting my value, adjusting my um, colors. And uh, it was really, um, yeah, very quick and easy. I, uh, therefore, I uh, chose the title for the tutorial, Quick and Easy, uh, of how to mix your colors quick and easy. Because, yeah, it, it make a really, really, uh, it helped me really um, learning the um, colors and how to mix colors. And I didn't expect that, but yeah, I'm really happy. Now I, uh, find myself not using pic uh, pixel that much anymore because now I know how to mix my colors because I uh, used it quite a lot before. So I, a big tip there, if you're having a bit troubles of uh, finding the right colors, you may uh, use that method. And here I'm starting with the uh, with the butterfly. It wasn't in the reference photo. I just combined uh, different photos for this uh, project, and I just uh, really like butterflies. And I found uh, that it would uh, suit this painting. It give it a little bit extra, maybe a little bit um, yeah fantasy feel. And I like that. It's just a personal uh, taste, but uh, obviously you don't have to do it, of course. But uh, yeah, this is uh, something I like to do. And maybe you uh, you did uh, watch this already. I will talk about this uh, more in uh, in a tutorial uh, which I'm planning on doing uh, on this whole butterfly. But I've seen uh, quite uh, no not quite a lot, but a few times my drawing because I was a little bit off. 
and uh, I did it uh, completely freehanded. This uh, this butterfly. I uh, norm, uh, most of the times I uh, like this uh, use this method, but then I'm drawing my drawings on a different uh, sheet of paper, and then I'm um, tracing that uh, that uh, drawing I already did over on my canvas, so I don't lose my lines and I can pick up it very quickly because I didn't I have done it on a different uh, piece of paper. But yeah, uh, now I didn't have that piece of paper, so I have to uh, adjust a few times my uh, my lines here. And I was uh, having a hard time with the wings because the uh, yeah, the most the wing on the most uh, upper hand side, so on his right side. Is uh, a, a bit smaller than the first one because it's it, it, the butterfly is a little bit um, bended and this uh, wing is a little bit farther away, so therefore it has to be a little bit uh, smaller than the one in the in the front. And I don't know why, but this time I had a little bit, uh, 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 yeah, it was a little little bit difficult for me to get it right. But in the end, it uh, it uh, did get right, so therefore. Uh, no problemo, but <laughs> yeah, if you have it on a separate piece of paper, it's just a little bit easier. And there were a lot of details, and just keep in mind that the oil paint uh, is drying slower, so you need to know when to stop painting for the day and leave it overnight, to let it dry, and you can then fill in your other layers, because this is very, very important for um, layering with oil paints and getting those details in. And therefore, uh, I, uh, therefore, I also like to mention that the details, when you are very, very up close to the painting, you see obviously a, a very, um, yeah, you know, very amount of brush strokes. But when you uh, back off a little bit of the painting and you go a little bit further and further away, those uh, brush strokes seem to fall into place, and that is one of the most of, uh, nice things that I, uh, yeah, basically discovered uh, the last. Um, last months of painting and uh, it's just now uh, that I uh, I think I'm getting the point and how that works and it's really really nice so uh, because I don't want to make photographs if I want to make photographs I grab my camera but I like to paint photorealistic so therefore I like to leave some brush strokes but they have to be correct they have to be in the right place in the right thickness and the right length and all that kind of stuff to uh, let it fall all into place when you are um, a little bit further away of the painting. So as you can see here, it looks kind of roughly, but when you uh, when we do back off uh, of this painting a little bit, everything will fall into place. And uh, yeah, I really, really like that. So I try to include it uh, more and more in my paintings. And here I make some, uh, some snow flocks and I will have a uh, real-time clip of one of them now so you can see what I'm doing and basically what I'm doing is I'm grabbing some paint I'm using uh, quite a lot of uh, liquid uh, and uh, from Ritzer and Newton and I'm filling in with the brush I'm making a circle motion because I want to have the paint in those uh, in the texture of the canvas now I'm having a clean brush that's very important and not another clean brush and I'm just making that around a motion with my hands and the brush uh, on the side of the uh, snow flock and I'm just making it smoother, the edges of the flock a little bit smoother and also with the liquid in, uh, in the paint it is uh, more translucent than um, if I only would use uh, the paint only and now I'm just uh, filling uh, using the mop brush for um, the inside flock to uh, leave no brush strokes in that flock so it uh, looks uh, more uh, realistic and this is the uh, end photo of the, uh, the piece, uh, the artwork. <laughs> and uh, I hope you like it. I uh, really like the colors. And uh, like I said in the intro, I really, really like her hair color. It's such a beautiful color. And um, yeah, this is it. Oh, and before I forget, I almost did. On the end of this tutorial, uh, after my outro, so uh, stay tuned, I will have a, a little gift. So, I hope you uh, like this tutorial, and as usual, please leave uh, your comments or your questions in the comment section below this video. Uh, like I said in the intro, I have a lot of more portraits to come, so if you like this, please uh, stay tuned on my channel, I will make more portraits. But if you're not into portraits that much, or you don't like them that much, I also will make uh, a lot of other artwork in between, like I said uh, in the intro, because um, I cannot make 12 portraits at all uh, after uh, one another because I have to make it a little bit interesting for myself and thereby 
even if I would do that, I like to switch between materials in between. So I now I did an oil painting. Maybe I do another one, but yeah, then I have to switch to at least acrylic paints or uh, I think pastels or my watercolor pencils. I didn't have a tutorial on my watercolor pencils yet. So um, and of course my ink tents is also a fun medium to work with. So a lot of uh, fun mediums that I can work in. And uh, like I said, I uh, it helps me get, um, keep it interesting for myself. Uh, so therefore, uh, once in a while there will be another portrait. For now, uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. And like I said, uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this uh, tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you like it, please subscribe to my channel. And if you do that, uh, you maybe want to click on that bell button uh, next to the su subscribe button. So you get a notification when I'm uploading a new tutorial. So that was all for now. Thank you once again for watching and I hope to see you at one of my next tutorials. Bye bye! So I hope you liked this tutorial. As usual please uh, let me know in the comment section below. And um, I have something... Uh, on the hair, for one on the butterfly, and also for one on the skin tone, or on the skin, and also um, her... Um